start, bench, cut these three Penn State running backs in college. Can you tell me who Penn State football is playing this weekend? Sorry, what? Welcome back into the Penn State Pulse. I'm your host, Dylan Dawson. We are now into July, and the 2024 college football season is under two months away. I'm working through my predictions for Penn State season, but first we're going to zoom into the roster today and talk some breakout players. So I'm picking one player at each position, both offense and defense, as well as one on special teams that I believe is most likely to have a breakout year for the Nitty Lions. Um, this isn't just picking the top player in each position group. We're factoring in their jump from last season to this one. That means no newcomers that were on the team last year, which would be freshmen and transfers. So beginning on the offensive side of the ball, we will look to the quarterbacks first, where my choice is actually Bo Pribula. Uh Bo should excel in Andy Kotelnicki's scheme. He runs the quarterbacks a lot. He will play multiple at the same time. That's going to be Drew. That's going to be Bo. I still think Drew takes a step forward in that offense and he makes improvement. But from start to finish between last year to this year, I think Bo makes the biggest improvement in that room. He is a running threat. Um, he's an explosive run threat at that. He had 56 carries for 329 yards last season. That's averaging almost six yards per carry. And he also scored six touchdowns and he threw for four. Um, I think Bo takes a big leap this year under AK as quarterback two, and he's a lot of fun to watch in that offense. Speaking of fun to watch in the offense at running back, I have Nick Singleton. He will also excel under Kyle Nicky's scheme. In my opinion, he is much more involved in the pass game this year, I believe. Uh, he's been working on his receiving threat a ton this offseason. It's something he's put a lot of time into, a lot of work into. I think Katron will get involved in that passing game as well. Uh, it's reported that Nick ran a 4-3-5 this spring, which is insane to think about at like 6 foot, 220 pounds. Um, he did it. I mean, to think of that in a receiving sense, as well as, as well as rushing the football, just getting someone like Nick Singleton in the open field, it's just going to be a lot of fun to watch. I think he takes a big step forward this season in 2024. A wide receiver. Uh, this is one that a lot of people have been paying a lot of attention to, especially in the last few years where Penn State has struggled a bit at this position. I'm going with Trey Wallace. Um, a lot of people know I've always been bullish on Trey's potential. He was internally thought to be wide receiver one around this time last year. Uh, you talk to a lot of people in Lash, and they believe that he would have actually been above Keandre at that wide receiver one position. He dealt with a lot of injury issues last season, uh, I believe hamstring early and then collarbone late. Um, he can be elite if he can stay on the field. He caught a team high seven balls for 72 yards in the season opener against West Virginia last season before suffering, I believe, what was the hamstring injury. Um, so he saw a little bit about what he could do as wide receiver one. He looked it against West Virginia last season, and then obviously the injury bug got to him. He has elite short area quickness, route running, uh, sure hands. He's just, I, I think he, if he puts it all together, he could be a very, very good receiver. A guy that you could see go round two or three in the draft next year. Uh, I also looked at Caden Saunders for this position, Amari Evans, and Tysir Denmark, true freshman Tysir Denmark. Um, I'm sure I'll get to him at some point before the season starts, but he could be a contributor as a true freshman this year. Um, you have to temper your expectations because he is a summer enrollee. He's only been on the team for two months now, so a long way to go there. But if it clicks for Tyser Denmark, he could also be a name to know. Moving on to tight end, I went with Tyler Warren here. Um, this is another position where there could have been a few different guys to select, but I went with the guy who is finally ready to step into that tight end one role with Theo Johnson off to the NFL being selected by the New York Giants. In 2023, um, Tyler Warren caught 34 balls for 422 yards and seven touchdowns. 
he he'll be one of the top tight ends in the country. I don't think there's any way to spin that besides what it is. I mean, his trajectory has been upward since his sophomore year, where he really started to put it together. This is a guy that was a quarterback in high school. Uh, a lot of you who follow recruiting know that he was committed to Virginia Tech actually as a quarterback. He's like 6'5", 210. Uh, a little bit of a skinnier guy for a tight end, but um, Penn State flipped him. I was a bit confused at the moment, and then word got out that they liked him at tight end. And it's just been pretty much puppies and rainbows since then. I mean, his development has been perfect. He's kind of trended upwards every single year. Um, now he's ready to take over that tight end one role, and it's hard not to see him at a top three to five tight end in the country this year. I mean, he's explosive. He catches the ball very well. You saw against Ole Miss in the Peach Bowl that he's got some speed to him, too. He's about 6'6", 260. He's a big guy, but he can outrun a corner once in a while. So he'll be a fun watch for sure. One of the top guys in the offense in 2024. Moving on to the line at offensive tackle, I went with Anthony Donko. This is a guy that a lot of people probably don't know his name yet. Um, he's one of the highest trending up guys on the team right now. He actually slid over to offensive tackle for the first time in game uh, in a pinch against Ole Miss in the Peach Bowl, and he looked pretty damn good. Uh, he should beat out Nolan Rucci, who he's battling for that starting right tackle spot. And Donko's only a redshirt freshman. Last year, he was a true freshman. Uh, I believe, yeah, he held on to his redshirt. He only played four games, I believe, in the regular season, which is the only ones that count towards that redshirt. So he was able to pay, play in the Peach Bowl and still hold on to that redshirt status. So redshirt freshmen should be starting at right tackle Anthony Donko. Listed at 6'5", 336 on the roster. It's a big dude, and he's progressing just how they wanted him to. On the interior, we're going with Vega Ioane. The Washington native will likely slide in to start at left guard for Penn State. He is another very large human, listed at 6'4", 346 on the roster. He played some quality reserve reps in his freshman season. He started five games on the interior last year as a redshirt freshman, and he is now ready for full-time starter, a full-time starter role as a redshirt sophomore. Uh, been a buzzy name pretty much all offseason. Uh, I've only heard good things about him, and he should be ready to take over. Then on the center side of things this was a tough one between nick dawkins and true freshman cooper cousins and i did end up going with nick uh, they've been pushing each other all off season so that can only benefit both guys in the long run i think nick will win out the starting job though and he takes that big step forward in his red shirt senior year at penn state he's been a locker room leader for years now and he should be ready to heavily contribute on the field as well I'm super excited for my guy, Nick. He should be able to take a hold of this opportunity and maybe turn it into some NFL draft stock down the road. So now we're moving on to the defensive side of the ball. We're going to start at DN with Jameel Lyons. The Philly native is not talked about nearly enough, in my opinion. He has insane athleticism, insane power. He's listed 6'5", 251 on the official Penn State roster, and he ran a 4'4", this spring, which is insane to think about. Um, Penn State's constantly churning out athletic freaks like this, and Jamil Lyons is the next one in line. The uh, strength and conditioning program, the nutrition program is always good at Penn State, and it looks like Jamil Lyons is going to be another product of that. He will force his way onto the field this season. They're deep at the end. They've got Abdul, Car Abdul Carter moving over. They've got Denai Dennis Sutton ready to step up. Jamil's going to find his way on the field. You're going to see a lot of him this year. On the interior of that defensive line, I went with Zane Durant at the tackle. Um, he should be able to take a step into a full-time starting role. This kid is 6'1", 290, and he ran, speaking of 40s, he ran a 4'6'6 this spring. This is a very fast team, a very fast defense in particular, and Zane Durant is no slouch. In comparing that, um, I mean, this is another guy like Tyler Warren. He's kind of just progressed every single year. He's taken a big step forward. His freshman season, he got to play a good bit. You got to see some of that potential. 
Last year, he started some games, stepped up, had a few sacks. I think this year he takes over as possibly the top, most consistent defensive tackle on the team. Moving over to linebacker, I went with Tony Rojas. This was probably the easiest, easiest position to decide. Um, this is one that a lot of the fan base is already familiar with. They've heard a lot about Tony. I mean, he had, I guess his true breakout game was against Maryland last year. He had the pick and the sack fumble, I believe it was. Uh, the strip sack all in that one game so that's when a lot of the fan base started really getting turned on to that tony rojas name uh, he was recruited by penn state as a sam linebacker um, but they've been training him to also play in the box so i don't see him leaving the field much in tom allen's 425 heavy defense um, with those two linebackers on the field they're gonna need a box linebacker at all times and tony should be able to do both he should be able to play out in coverage he should be able to play in the box he should be able to play down by the line and you don't take a guy like that off the field. So I think he could be a household name in college football circles by the end of this season. Moving back in the defense to safety, I have KJ Winston Jr. Uh, it's another player I've been extremely bullish on since coming out of high school as a three-star recruit. I've been saying KJ has all-American potential and now he is within reach of that status. Uh, I've seen some first round mocks with him already coming out for the draft next year. Uh, he'll start full time at safety this season. Last year he put up 61 tackles, 5 passes defense, 2.5 tackles for loss and a pick as a mostly full time starter. So moving into higher snap counts, um, I don't see why he can't seize that and just take advantage of the opportunity. He ran another 40 time here for you, a 4-4-2 at 6-2, 2.05, 2.10. So that's just another guy that you're probably not outrunning um, up against this Penn State defense. So the last position on the defense to cover is corner. A lot of you probably think I'm going with A.J. Harris. I almost did, uh, but this may surprise some people. I'm going with Audavian Collins. Um, I think Georgia transfer A.J. Harris will be an enormous contributor and possibly cornerback one on this team but you can't ignore Collins' progression this offseason. He is pushing for starting reps at this point with Cam Miller. Um, I think they might split time on the edge. He, Collins that is, clocked a 4-2-8-40 in the spring. Now these are hand times, but that still translates to a 4-3 um, laser in the combine, which is absolutely ridiculous to think about. Uh, a lot of you probably haven't even heard this name yet, if you don't follow the team too closely, but he transferred in from Mississippi State in 2023. Didn't hear much on him at all last season. Um, and he's kind of just exploded this offseason. He really took to the strength and conditioning. He's a bit of a smaller guy compared to some of the other guys in that room. He's about five, I think he's 5'11, 178 on the roster. Um, but like I said, he has that speed. He's physical for his size, and he has just exploded this offseason. I've heard more buzz on Collins than any other name on the roster thus far, and he should be in line to take a huge step this year. All right, lastly, we have special teams, and I went with Ryan Barker. Um, he's a kicker. I went ahead and picked one special teams player who's trending up, and the walk-on kicker took the cake. He redshirted last year in his true freshman season, uh, but he's been pushing scholarship guys all offseason and may actually win the kicking job outright. So Ryan Barker, that's a name to keep a tab on, keep your eye on. So there you have it, one player at almost every position that I think is primed for a breakout season. Thank you so much for watching. This has been episode two, a little bit shorter one of the Penn State Pulse with Dylan Dawson. Signing off, have a good one.